welcome back to El Deco. Today we are going to be making some coasters and these are the coasters that we're making. We're using real dry flowers, paper butterflies, and gold leaves, and some makeup powder to make a pretty colored background. Then we're going to back it with some cork backing. So I will show you the entire process of how I did these, any tips and tricks that I know. So let's get started. First we have to mix our resin. This is a 3 ounce paper cup that I use for mixing. The resin that we're using is Total Bolt's High Performance Resin, the Slow Hardener version. It's a 2 to 1 ratio resin and I have a calibrated dispenser just for this resin to make my life easier since I use this resin for pretty much everything. The lever on the side will dispense both parts at once, just the right amount that we need. Link to the resin is in the description if you want to try it out. Let's go back over to our table to mix it. We don't need too much resin for this because the coaster molds that we're using does not take up much resin and we're pouring in two layers. When we're mixing resin, make sure to mix slow and steady. Use a plastic mixing stick like I have here or a silicone one to help reduce the bubbles when we're mixing. Wooden popsicle sticks are porous and introduces a lot of micro bubbles into the resin that can be a little bit difficult to remove. I'm showing you a little bit of what real time looks like and then I sped up the mixing to save us some time. My mixing cup today isn't transparent so it's a little bit hard to see when the resin is fully mixed on camera. You want to make sure that there are no streaks in your mixture because that's unmixed resin and you want to make sure that your resin is not foggy. You'll see bubbles because the act of mixing will produce bubbles but you'll see the bubbles clearly. This resin is pretty good with releasing bubbles so that's why I love this for my molds. It's also a thinner resin so it allows me to easily work with delicate pressed flowers. Once we're done mixing, we'll set this mixture aside while I show you what we're working with today. I usually start my videos here doing the mixing off camera to save us time, but I will start showing the mixing more to make my videos more full process. So for our inclusions, we have paper specimens from Moth & Myth. They're very realistic butterflies printed on high quality resin safe paper, one of my favorite inclusions to use. For the florals, we have some greens, orange cosmos, and red alyssums. We're going to add some gold flakes to this as well. I get them in sheets and they come in different colors, rose gold and silver as well. Today we're going to be using the gold ones. I got these sheets on Amazon so these are definitely not 24k gold. It'll be a while until we can afford that. <laughs> Anyways, before we pour we have to make sure our molds are clean. We clean the molds with tape and this is clear packaging tape. Painter's tape will also work for this step. I've seen people use lint rollers too. Do keep in mind that the tape is touching the surface of your mold, so just lightly tap the tape against your mold to pick up any dust. My mold is pretty old now and it's turning matte, so you can see how the inside is wider compared to the sides. That's because I've already made so many coasters with these. I'm going to have to add a top coat to the pieces that come out of this to get a shiny finish anyways, and we'll do that together after. That said, I'm not too worried about imperfections on the surface of my molds for that reason. Now we're going to pour our coasters. I filled the molds each about halfway for this first layer and I saved a little bit of resin to mix my gold flakes in. Before placing my inclusions, I will take my mixing stick and run it along the edge of the mold to get any bubbles trapped along the sides to the surface and that way we can pop it with a heat gun. Just a note, we don't want to fill the molds all the way up to the top in this first layer because flowers tend to float to the surface. The first layer will hold our flowers in place and the second layer will cover the entire mold. Now I begin to place my butterflies and flowers. I'm not working with any plan in mind. I would love planning ahead to be my style but I prefer to just let my mind and hands create in the moment. We're going to just let creativity flow.
To add the gold flakes, I like to mix my gold sheet into some resin to break it up and turn them into flakes. Then I place the flakes into my piece. Sometimes I will just put small sheets directly into the pieces and break it up in the piece, but the coasters are looking kind of full, so it's easier to break the flakes separately and just place them where we want them. When we're done placing our gold flakes, we're going to let this layer set and come back for the background layer in several hours. Our first layer has hardened a bit. For the background layer, we are using the same high performance resin from Total Bolt, the slow hardener version. This time I already pre-mixed it so we're not spending a lot of time on camera mixing resin. For the colors, we're using pastel blue and a little bit of white to make it look like the sky. I already separated the resin in two cups for these. The white resin is going to be a mix of black diamond pigments, white diamond effect mica, and Mixel's white tint. The pastel blue will be a mix of Craftsmart's acrylic paint from Michaels and the white diamond effect mica. I use paint to get all my pastel colors, but do keep in mind that acrylic paint is water-based and resin and water are not friends. So don't put too much paint or else it can cause your resin to not cure properly or flash cure or other results that you don't want. Mix the pigment into the resin completely. When the pigments are fully mixed into the resin, and you know your pigment is fully mixed when there are no streaks of colors or lumps of powder, we can pour the background layer. For these coasters, I am going for the blue skies and white clouds look. I am using the mixing stick and dropping some lines of white, then pouring blue over it, hoping that the white turns out like clouds. I repeat this step until I fill up my mold, and when we're done with the background, we'll let this fully cure. 12 hours at least, and then be back to demold it. We left these coasters to cure overnight. The resin cures in about 5 hours for me, so we left it longer just in case to make sure it fully hardened. And look at how these coasters turned out. Orange and blue is such a great color combo as you can see here. This is literally like a monarch garden in a coaster. You can see some surface bubbles and the matte finish, which I kind of like the matte actually. But we'll add a top coat to fill in the imperfections to these coasters and add a shiny finish. Here is the second coaster in the set. Oh, I really love how these turned out. The butterflies are so realistic, which goes perfect with our real flowers. And the added gold flakes are so pretty. Notice that I got some resin drips on the sides of the coasters. They're just drips that fell on the side of the mold and was connected to the piece. They just pop right off. Now we will prep the coasters for a top coat. When we top coat pieces, there's a chance that resin will drip over the edges and onto the back of our piece. We will protect the back of our pieces with Elmer's glue so that way we don't have to sand any possible resin drips. If we get drips, it will stick to the glue protection layer and we can peel off the glue along with the drips when the top coat cures. We drop a little bit of glue to the center of our piece and spread it out. 
Start off with a little bit of glue and you can always add more later. I am applying the glue with a silicone brush. When the glue dries on the brush, we can peel it off and reuse the brush as many times as we need. When we finish applying the glue, we will let it dry completely. It takes a little while, about 18 hours for me, but once it's dried, we will go top coat the coasters. Our glue has dried and we're back in the resin room to add the top coat to our coasters. We will set our coasters on top of some cups to give it some height. This will allow the resin to drip over the edges if there are any. You can use anything that will prop the coasters up with the coasters edges not touching it. Our resin is already mixed up, totable to tabletop resin. It's a coating resin so I use it for all my top coats. It's thicker than the resin we use to make the coasters and a thicker resin is one tip for top coating. The second tip to not getting the resin to spill over the edge is to not over pour. To make sure that you're not over pouring, you want to pour a little bit of resin in the center of the piece and then slowly and carefully spread it out to the edges, like how I am doing in the video. Do not pour too much and do not go beyond the edges. You can always add more if there are any uncovered spots. When we're done with the top coat, use a heat gun to pop any of the bubbles at the surface. I would stick around until the work time of the resin is up about 20 minutes for this tabletop resin because bubbles will continue to rise to the surface until then and just continue to pop any surface bubbles every now and then. Our coasters are fully cured and look at how much shinier the top is. Now we have to remove the glue layer and add the cork backing. We did not get any resin drips but I still like to have the glue protection just in case because if we don't have the glue layer that's when the resin will drip over the edges for sure. To remove the glue layer I use a sharp tool to create an opening so I can peel the glue off. Here I am using my Cricut weeding tool. That is just what I have on hand. You can use a needle or something else. For coasters that have an opaque background, I will add a cork backing to it. I have these adhesive cork backings that are 4 inches in diameter. I had sized my coasters to be the same to make my life easier. I just peel the adhesive off and stick it to the coasters. I make sure to line it up nicely so there are no corks sticking out of the sides. I don't do cork backings for clear coasters because the cork will show through and then our coasters will not be clear anymore. But since these are opaque, you won't see the cork, you'll see the background color that we had done. So this is perfect. Now this is a complete coaster. Let's put the cork bagging on the other one and then we'll show them off in better lighting. Nothing beats the natural sunlight when it comes to showing off resin artworks. These coasters look so perfect. The top coat came out so pretty and shiny. The colors are so vibrant too. 
The background isn't exactly as blue as I wanted to, but the colors of the flowers and the butterflies, the greens, I love everything about these coasters. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed making these coasters with me. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, all of my coasters and anything I make here on this channel is available on my site, so you can check that out in the link below. And let me know in the comments what you think about this video. I'll see you next time.